uh, record this event today so that we can put it on my RG page. Um, hold on one second. So the RGT resources page, I will put in here in the uh, chat group. Uh, um, so that's there. That is a website that my assistant Gina created that allows us to keep training information, uh, information about um, EXP, there's information on my free Friday coaching calls that I have every Friday at 9 a.m. on the same Zoom link uh, and lots of amazing stuff that you can dip your fingers and toes into and use to create a different result in your business. So uh, some of you may know who I am. There could be a lot of you coming on here who don't know who the heck I am and that's great, it's fine. Uh, I should let you know that my name is Rick Jiha. And um, I am about to celebrate uh, next Saturday, actually. Um, this coming Saturday, I'll be celebrating my 40, 41st year selling houses. And uh, I'm at about in, uh, also in May, uh, my 28th year, let's see, 20, yes, 28th year of coaching and speaking and training. So uh, let's just get started on today's subject. And if you want to use some of this, uh, in your own business, you can. And if you don't want to, that's okay. So here's what I find about taking listings in a low inventory market, but it's also something I found about just taking listings. And so let's, let's focus on this subject for a minute. There was a point in my life when I thought, thought, gosh, it's a good thing I'm a real estate agent here where I was born and raised. And I know a lot of people because I know a lot of people and they now know I'm a realtor and they want to sell their houses. But now in my career, starting at about year 25, uh, so for about the last 15 or 16 years, I don't worry about that anymore. You could pick me up and drop me anywhere and I would become a listing, a successful listing agent overnight. Why is that? Well, there's a lot of things that come into that and it's not just experience. In fact, experience in the real estate industry is not a precursor to being a successful listing agent. I'm gonna say that again. Tons of experience in the real estate industry is not a precursor to you being a successful listing agent. Now, uh, I can see some of the names and faces, not all of them, but I know there's at least two very, very strong listing agents on this call. One from Oklahoma, one from San Antonio, and they do tons of listings. Now. Why would two people like that, Lori and Vanessa, be on this call? Well, guess what? I'm on calls like this a lot too, where I can learn from someone else, maybe that one little object. So number one thing to being a successful listing agent is being learning based. Learning based means these four things. Listen, write them down. Hungry, humble, smart, and coachable. Okay, the people I wanna surround myself with are hungry, humble, smart, and coachable. God, Vanessa, I just love you, thank you. So hungry, humble, smart, and coachable. Think about the people you surround yourself with. You know, when I put an ad on Facebook, I remember doing this in 2016. I put an ad on my personal Facebook page. It was really just a reach out to my friends. I said, hey, everybody, I'm growing my team. I need a really good buyer's agent on my team. Uh, the only four qualifications before conversing with me is that you be hungry, humble, smart, and coachable. Oh my gosh. My Facebook page lit up. It was people that I've known for years in real estate. I would have never imagined in my mind because guess what humans do? We make up stories all the time that aren't true. But I never could have imagined in my mind that the quality of people that were text, that were Facebook messaging me would be interested in being on my team. Wow. Okay. So what did that do for me? It first opened my mind that, gosh, there's a lot of people out there that have different thoughts about their business and their future than I thought they had. It's none of my business to have thoughts for someone else. I guess should be busy enough taking care of thoughts of me. All right. But here's what I found that all of these people claimed to be hungry, humble, smart, and coachable. But in within a 10 minutes of being in conversation with them, I realized that you know, on one of them, I realized, oh, this person is not only not hungry, they're certainly not humble. 
Okay. Now, is that a judgment call? No. And yes. Right. I get to decide who I want to surround myself with. If it doesn't feel hungry, humble, smart, and coachable to me, well, I'm the one who's looking for that person. What does that mean about you being a better listing agent? You need to check in with you every morning, not your mom, not your dad, not your wife, not your husband, not your significant other, or your kids. Just go check in the mirror and say, hey, Rick, am I showing up as hungry, humble, smart, and coachable today? Am I open to learning? I was on a call right before this call uh, with a friend of mine. She was introducing me to a guy who owned his own brokerage in Sparks, Nevada. And he bought two office buildings right next to each other on a couple of acres. And he's obviously going to be the only real estate agent leasing in those two office buildings. But he created this collaborative coffee shop where people can put art in and the community can come and go. And he wants to create a community type of uh, real estate company where the consumers are coming and going all the time, not just when they have an appointment to talk to a realtor. Pretty good idea, right? I was like, ah, that's cool. So what did I do while I was listening to him? At first, I was saying, I've owned nine brokerages, man, nine brokerages. That was like mental, like I should have shot myself in the head. Okay. But what did I find myself doing? Correcting myself, sitting up, changing my posture and saying, wait, this guy's got a pretty cool idea that he's working on. I don't want to do it. I want nothing to do with it. But I was really intrigued by the idea and how it's been working for them. And they've already recruited 12 agents. You know, those kinds of things. What do I need to be to list a lot of properties? Hungry, humble, smart, and coachable. Now, that's the first big step. You got to stop telling stories to yourself that your level of experience or the fact that you like working with buyers is an excuse. Listings are the backbone of the real estate industry. My uncle, my very first broker in 1979, when I wasn't even a licensed agent, I was typing listings to earn extra money at his office. They used to have to type them up with carbon paper and I would roll them up into my typewriter and da, 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 stuff no one does anymore today. But the reason I said that, he would always say these words, he who lists lasts, right? And then he had awards every month at the end of the award. Who was the king of listings? Who was the king of buyers that month? The queen of listings and the queen of buyers. He used to hand these awards out all the time. But man, he would really, really rave about whoever took the most listings, okay? So given all of that, what's that supposed to mean? You've got to now get a mindset to be committed to listings. You've got to have a mindset to be committed to listings. Look, I'll tell you, I had so much fun in the first 20 years of my business showing buyers property. Why? Because I'm an egomaniac and I like the fun and I needed to practice my jokes on someone. And, you know, I had, I had a Cadillac the size of a boat. All right. And man, they, you could fit five people in the back seat, like just stuff them all in. That was before we worried too much about. So it was always fun to work with buyers. And yes, it's true. But the National Association of Realtors and my own common sense was able to show me that I will work Okay, so let's say you have a $500,000 listing and a $500,000 buyer. Fact is, you're going to make the same amount of commission dollars on both of those. Yet, something that was really, you know, hit me like a ton of bricks in the eyeballs was that you will spend 300% more time with a buyer than you will with a seller. Now, you might be thinking in your mind, Rick, are you saying not to work with buyers? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that you will attract more buyers with listings than you will with yelling out for people from the rooftop saying, anybody wanna buy a house? Or even by spending a ton of money on Zillow or realtor.com leads. They all work, but every coach I've ever heard speak, every top real estate speaker trainer has said, the more listings you get, the more buyer leads you'll get, all right? So if you get more listings, which pay you more money, you will not have to spend money to buy buyer leads because you'll get so many from having had those listings, right? You don't have to do anything, but put your listing in the MLS and it will hit in most MLSs in the country, approximately 135 other websites. Did you know that? Something to know. Now, here's the other excuse for people not wanting to take listings. And by the way, this is everything I'm telling you has nothing to do with low inventory market or high inventory market. Because when pe people, when there's tons of listings and nothing selling, people go, why do I want to take listings? They're not selling. Well, that's because you need the skill set 
of how to work on listings when there's tons on the market, meaning you've got to be in the top 5% of showability and the lowest 5% of price for any house you list when you're in a market where it's a buyer's market and there's tons of listings. But these are all things we learn if we set out to be successful listing agents. Now, I'm a buyer's agent on a team. It's the, list, the team leader's job to get listings. Really? I think the team leader would probably hug and kiss you if you went out and talked to somebody and brought a listing back to the team. I don't know one that wouldn't. And maybe it's not appropriate to hug and kiss you, but virtually hug and kiss you for the act of you bringing a listing. Look, ladies and gentlemen, listings are the same commission for one third of the time spent, one third. And the more you establish and create systems when you do that, and there's lots of people willing to show you those or share with you their systems, I'm certainly willing to, um, then, you know, like my biggest system in real estate is my assistant, Gina. Like without her, I couldn't do what I do. But I asked her the other day, I go, how do you keep track? And she goes, oh, we have a list of almost 50 things that we do from the beginning to the end of every listing. I'm like, 50 things, right? And I was like, wow. So, and, and the list is growing because the better service oriented we get, the more we throw other pieces in there, right? So um, now listings in a low inventory market, the main thing, what is the number one way to get listings? Uh, Gary Keller said it in the millionaire real estate agent, right? Everybody talks about it is to prospect. How do I prospect? Well, the number one thing you should be prospecting is the people in your phone, people in your phone. Because if they're in your phone, for the most part, you know them, or you wouldn't have put them in your phone, or you know of them, right? Or you just really wanted them in your phone because they're really cool and you're not. I did a lot of that when I was younger. So um, all I'm saying is regular phone calls to your database and to the people that you know to check in. Listen, number one thing that you can do to get listings in any market is to check in with people, see how they're doing. Do people know other real estate agents besides you? Heck yes. They know a lot of them. Think about it. Think about a regular real estate agent who's been in the business, let's say 10 years. Does he know other companies? Yes. Does he know other realtors? Yes. Why isn't he working there? Why isn't he working at those other realtor, with those other realtors or those other companies? Because he's made a decision to, to work where he works or she works and with the people they are, he or she works with. However, it's the same for your consumer. You know, the consumer probably knows a lot of real estate agents, but they're going to usually think of one or two when it comes to doing real estate business. How, does, how do you change the one or two people they're thinking of if they were going to buy or sell real estate to your name? Okay, it's, it is mind, you know, top of mind awareness. We call it T-O-M-A, top of mind awareness, TOMA. How do I get more top of mind awareness? I'm in their face all the time. I'm sending them two emails a month. I'm calling them on their birthdays. I'm calling them on their wedding anniversaries. I'm sending them um, anniversary cards. And then I'm doing the research to know the anniversary of the day they bought their home. How do you do that if you didn't sell them the home? It's easy, it's public record. Go back and look, find the date of the, the day they closed escrow on the home they live in. Even if you just got your license just now or over the last five years, and, and all the people you know bought their homes more than that, just go look it up and put it in your, in, in your phone under their contact as a, as a birthday or an anniversary that's recurring. So it says, oh, look, Tom and, Tom and Mary bought their home 13 years ago today. Who cares that you weren't even a realtor then? Pick up the phone, Tom, Mary, how are you? It's Rick, Rick, Rick Jihad, yeah. What are you doing? Oh, just checking in. How you guys been handling this crazy year of COVID? Oh, we're good. Everybody's healthy. Great. Hey, listen, you know what I noticed today in my notes? 14 years ago today, you bought your home. Can you believe that? Good for you. I'll bet you've done a ton of different things too. What have you done? Right? Have a conversation. This is the number one question I get. I've been coaching now for 28 years. Selling for 41 years. The one question I get a lot is, what's the scripts you use when you call people? I go, are you kidding me right now? I start with hello and see where it goes from there. Okay. Now, if I gave you a script, but you said hello and they hung up on you, does the script matter? No, you're not going to use it. 
there are scripts. There are amazing scripts. I think the use of scripts and dialogues is very good, but I think you, I, we all need to get comfortable with just a conversation. Uh, I was teaching a class once in, um, I think it was around 2004 or five, and the title, the subtitle of the class was, remember, it's a conversation, not a presentation. And what that was about, that was actually about recruiting, but a lot of people took it for listings and said, maybe I should have more conversations than, um, more conversations than presentation. And why do you say that? It's because when you sit down with somebody who wants to sell their home, what would you most want to be at that time? Well, you'd, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it for you. You'd want to be the realtor they chose to list their home. But how would I become that? Listen to this question. How can I be the answer to your prayers till I know what you're praying for? Right? Wouldn't it be better that we ask more questions when we got in front of somebody about them and what they're looking for. Now, I'm going into some deeper things about taking listings, and you might still be back there going, wait, I haven't even figured out how to get to the kitchen table. Good. I don't want to go too far, but I want to check in on your mindset about being a top listing agent. All right? Now, the difference between a low inventory market and a high inventory market is really only how fast the properties sell. But what, how, what is the difference of those properties as it relate, uh, those markets as it relates to getting listings? We had, I coach by the way, for a coaching company called Workman Success Systems out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, one of the things they offer is free, uh, free consultations. If you ever want a free consultation with Workman Success Systems where they review with you your business and whether or not coaching would be a benefit to you, let me know, I'll hook you up. Now, one of the things that Workman Success Systems talks about is, um, is you know, understanding the marketplace and understanding, you know, why would it be so difficult to get a listing in this market? So about seven coaches and all of their clients, so it was about um, 80 something people all combined, uh, had a challenge to, um, they had a challenge to be able to go and talk to the people in their phone, their database, their sphere of influence, and their past clients. And what they were going to do, listen to this very carefully, is they were going to create a survey and I don't have access to it yet, but I'm gonna give you some ideas about it. They did a survey where they were just checking in with the people to say, hi, how are you doing? How have you held up during these unusual times? Uh, no negativity, just they were just being upbeat and positive. And they say, you know, thank you so much for answering the phone today. I'm actually calling to do a quick survey of a few questions. Are you open to answering them? Yeah, great not talking to you about buying or selling or listing your home. I just want to get your impression of these questions. And they would say things like, what do you know about what's going on in the real estate market today? What do you think has happened with the value of your home over the last several years? Things like that, like questions that would tell you whether or not, listen carefully. And I want you to remember as I ask this question, when do you ever think of an attorney other than when you need an attorney, right? You don't, right? And people don't get that, yes, for a lot of people, real estate is a sexy subject. Everybody wants to talk about it. Like we were walking our dog last night and I stopped to, I stopped to talk to a neighbor about a gorgeous, I don't know him, just down the street, but he has this gorgeous old 1970 Dodge Charger. And I used to own a 69 Dodge. So I started chatting with him and he goes, where do you live? I go, I live down the street. And he goes, what do you do? I'm a realtor. Then all of a sudden he goes, Oh, I want to ask you about Proposition 19, which was a proposition that passed here in California. So what's that say? There are a lot of people who want to talk about real estate, but there are also a lot of people like you and me that real estate is like an attorney. I don't think of a realtor or I don't think of the value of my house because it's the house I live in and I'm not going anywhere. So why do I have to worry about real estate? So a lot of people have their head in the sand as it relates to values, what's going on in the market. Well, guess what this, this group of coaches and agents found in their survey? That between 26 and 34% of everyone they called had no idea that their, the value of their home had skyrocketed since COVID. 
26 to 34 percent. That's a lot of people. So for someone that says, oh, I don't know how to get listings, they go, well, start by talking to the people in your phone because a quarter of them to a third of them, somewhere between a quarter and a third of them have no idea what happened to the value of their home. And maybe if they did, they might think it's a good time to sell, right? You think because you, me and you, when I say you, I'm including myself, we think that because real estate news is everywhere, interest rates so low, oh, interest rates popped up to three, they went up. Oh my God, I wanna slap people. I go, what? Do you remember? No, you don't. Do you remember when they were 8% and I could still sell 100 homes a year, right? In 1981, my second year in the business, the interest rates went from like from 14 to 22 in a three or four month period. We had to think of all kinds of creative crap to get homes sold. I'm not saying that because I'm older and I've been in the business, real estate business longer that, you know, like our parents used to say, I walk to school uphill both ways in the snow, right? You know, stuff like that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that every market requires that all of us strategize and help each other to be better with that we start thinking more abundantly, right? Now, if I were a scarcity thinker, think about this for a minute, would I be sharing what I know about how do you get listings? No, I'd be going, oh, I can't tell them how to go get more listings because then they'll take them from me. That's crap. Guess what every real estate agent has that every other real estate agent has that they'll never be the same. That's your database. Your database. You have a database. You have a network. Now, I have been a maniac about my database and my network. When I think my database and network is too small, guess what I grab? I grab my high school yearbook. And oh, by the way, my sons went to the same high school and I advertised in their yearbooks. So I go grab those old yearbooks and I open them up. My sons are in their 30s, okay? Um, so guess what? I can open those up. Well, since my oldest son bought a house three years ago, what do I know? These people are buying houses. My, my lender told me in January of this year that the number one age buying group this year that will make up 50 to 70% of the first time buyers is 33 years old. Hello, my sons are 32 and 35. That's all the people they know. So guess what I do when I open up those yearbooks? I see a bunch of potential buyers. I might call or text my son. Hey, Anthony, you got this guy's phone number? I want to text him, right? Guess what else I do? I remember that those guys have parents that we all were taking our kids to school at the same time. So I might go, huh, let me go knock on their door. They might be thinking, right? One of them might be living in a damn two-story home and they're 60 something years old with bad hips. Let me go knock on their door. Ladies and gentlemen, there are opportunities after opportunities after opportunities. And I don't care what kind of crap you've made up in your head. This is the time to become a great listing agent. And you can do it very easily by having more conversations than anyone else, having more conversations than you've ever had. And just have conversations. How are you? What are you thinking? What's going on? What do you, you can even do the survey thing. Hey, just curious, what, what have you heard about the value of your home? I love asking that question now, ever since I heard about that survey. What have you heard about the value of your home? I just took a listing the other day and, and the guy said, so what do you think? We should be listening at 8, 825. I'm like, what? Your house is worth between nine and a million. He goes, what? Like, no idea. And he's calling me to list his home. Look, do you know what happens? And I've said it over and over again today is we create all these thoughts in our head. Like, put me anywhere. Drop me down and say, Rick, become a top listing agent in three months. I will knock on doors until my feet fall off. Right? People go, well, you could just call and your shoes and feet would be fine. I'm not a big fan. But if it's raining or snowing or... Or if, if it's COVID, I can still call, right? But here's the thing, conversation before presentation, all right? So my wife has this saying that she tells people all the time. She says this, Vanessa, Lori, you may have heard her say this before. She says, prescription before diagnosis is malpractice. Now stop there for a minute. Do you, and I'd really like you to participate. You can unmute yourself or whatever. Um, there's a really handsome guy with a cap called the Lattimore Group. Uh, do you want to unmute and talk to me or, or is that just, maybe that's a picture and he's, oh shoot, I'm sorry. That might be a picture, not a real person there, so. 
Let me ask him to unmute. Okay, so what does that mean? It means if you went to a doctor and went in and said, my stomach hurts, and he goes, oh, here's some pills. That's prescription before diagnosis. And he doesn't even know what's wrong with you, and he gave you some pills, that would be called malpractice. It's the same thing in listing. You don't want to talk to somebody. You don't, you don't know what people want until you ask them. You don't know what people are thinking about their lives. But why would a real estate agent call their title rep or somebody that does analytics and say, hey, could you get me a list of everybody that lives in this neighborhood that's lived in their home more than 30 years and it's two story? Why would I want to call people that have lived in their home more than 30 years and their home's two story? Well, maybe they're sick of the stairs. Maybe the master bedroom's upstairs, right? There's lots of reasons. There's lots of ways to call people. What's another thing to call people? Is call people, you can, you can find out. There's actually records to call people who have an interest rate of over 5% on their home. And you might say, I'm not a lender. Really? Because it could open up a conversation where you could refer a lender. And if you refer them a resource, right? If you've referred them a resource, who are they gonna call for other resources? Hello, that's me. So what do I wanna do in the real estate industry? For top of mind awareness, I wanna be your resource for everything. I wanna convince you to call me first for anything you need. Because if you call me first for the name of a good restaurant, if you call me first for where to get my tires rotated, if you call me first about who would cut my lawn or redesign my backyard, then I'm certainly gonna call you first when it comes time to list or sell. So these are our issues as a real estate group is that, you know, we were paying millions of dollars as a, an, as an organization to companies that are using our information to sell back to us. Okay. That's my political belief. I don't want to go into it right now. Have I never paid for Zillow leads? No, I'd be lying if I didn't, if I said no. I have paid for Zillow leads, but it just irks me that I'm the one getting the listing from my clients and then they take that and use it to get buyer leads and then sell them back to me. My fault, not me personally alone, but certainly us as an organization. I don't wanna get lost in that crap. I just wanna sell more houses because I wanna make more money. Why? Because I'm greedy? No, because I wanna do more things for my family, right? And you know, we all make fun. I've heard a speaker make fun of the word, your why. What's your big why? But at the end of the day, money is not the why. Money is not the reason people work. It's what they decide they're going to do with the money. What they decide they're going to do with the money. Okay? That's your big why. That's what, you, that's what drives you. And if you don't have enough drive on what the money is going to do for you, then you're probably not going to do a lot of the activities. So get a stronger push, right? Man, my hip was hurting me for two years. I was dri dribbling a basketball down the court and limping. COVID comes, oh, rest. I can't play basketball, not just because I have a bad hip, but because they've turned off basketball. Finally, during COVID, I go get my hip replaced. Man, I'm out shooting baskets. It was, listen to this, the pain of staying the same, right, was greater than the pain of changing. Let me remind that to you. If you have problems in your real estate business and you need to list more homes because you need to make more money and you're taking buyers out and they keep losing out on the transaction, we just got a buyer, for instance, in the contract on his 12th time we made an offer for him. 12th. That's a lot of work to get one buyer into contract, right? She counted. She sold him 67 houses. It's a lot of houses. What I'm saying is I want, I want more money and I want to do it in less time because I don't wanna be that person that has money freedom, but has no time freedom to enjoy it. What does that? Listings. Think about it, all right? I've taken listings while sitting on a beach. I've taken listings on a cruise. I've taken listings at 35,000 square, 35,000 feet on a Southwest flight. These are all true statements, all right? Did all the work happen? No, my wife and I took a 60 day trip in our RV. We did 15 million in business, only 6 million of it was listings. And people said, oh, are you here to come by my house? I actually, actually, I'm not there. My assistant will run by and take some pictures for me, but let's meet in person on this date. Okay, our mindset, our limiting beliefs, our scarcity thinking is what keeps us from having everything we want. And everything we all should be wanting right now is more listings in a low inventory market. 
So I'm going to challenge you today to do one thing different, and I'm going to tell you a reason why. You make more calls, you'll get more listings. You say, oh, well, how do you know I won't get more buyers? I know because your, your conversation is going to be slanted towards listings. You know, we tell people all the time, everybody you meet, you should say, who do you know wants to buy or sell a house? But what if I change that and everybody I met or saw, I said, who do you know who needs to sell a house? Who do you know who needs to move? Who do you know whose home is too big for them now? Who do you know whose home is too small for them now? Are you watching these? I'm not watching. Are you listening to these questions? So I could talk all day about this subject because it's my favorite subject. My start in speaking and training and coaching and being a professional speaker, my start came by doing listing classes, right? This is like one of my favorite subjects. I taught my first listing class in 1993, right? So um, all those things are really, really, to me, effective. So let me, uh, so I've challenged people to do 30 minutes of call uninterrupted, 30 minutes. And I said, remember, if you get one person on the phone, that could take up 12, 13, 14, 15 minutes. You never know, or 20. And if you don't, you'd just be leaving a lot of voicemail messages. Now, I want you to listen to this. If I'm leaving voicemail messages for people, I should probably also write them a note because the voicemail is one touch. And then the handwritten note they get a day or so later or two days later after they heard the voicemail is a second touch. All that causes is top of mind awareness, T-O-M-A, top of mind awareness. Let's say that you left them a voicemail, just coincidence. Two days later, they get your handwritten note. Oh, the Latimer group is moving. Sir, how are you? Would you unmute and talk to me or no? I'm sorry, you don't wanna be called on, it's okay. Um, uh, let's see, so now three days after they get your handwritten note, they happen to go into work and somebody at work says, you know, my daughter's thinking of buying a house. Do you know anyone? You're at top of mind awareness. They think, oh, I got, a, I got a voicemail from Rick. I got a handwritten note from Rick. Now, if I do reach somebody and I have a conversation with them, hey, it's Rick. Rick Jiha, yeah, long time no talk. How are you? And they start chatting with you and you say, you know, from March 16th of last year till now, things have been a little crazy. How have you handled it? How's your health? How's your, are you giving, here's one of the questions I've been asking people. Are you giving yourself some grace like that? And then I'll chat with them for a while and just see where the conversation goes. Now, if you're starting to feel queasy at this point about, gosh, how am I going to bring up real estate? Then don't. It's okay, but you're going to have to at some point. Now I'm going to give you a sample. You've all communicated with lots of people. Not everybody in your phone, when you look at their name, you go, God, I haven't talked to them for ages. I'm sure there's people in your phone that you do talk to, maybe two, three times a year. That's pretty regular for most people. But here's a script. I pick up the phone and I'm calling someone I know who I'm in contact with. Not always, but they get my emails and they sometimes respond. And I might see them on Facebook clicking on something once in a while. And I say, Tom, it's Rick Gia. Rick, how are you? Hey, listen, Tom, I really want to catch up on a personal note and let's set some time aside to do that. But right now I'm calling you about business. Do you have a couple of minutes? Now, I hardly ever get a no to that question. Hardly ever, because these aren't cold people. These are people I'm talking to uh, that I'm in regular contact with. So here, I'm going to run it by you again. Hey, Tom, it's Rick Jiha. Rick, how are you, buddy? Long time, no talk. I go, yeah, hey, Tom, I really want to catch up on a personal note but let's and let's set some time aside to do that. But right now I'm calling you about business. Do you have a couple of minutes? Now, where can I go from this point? After I've said you got a couple of minutes, he goes, yeah, sure. What's on your mind? I could do a lot of things. I go, let me just ask you really quickly. What have you heard about the value of your home and what's going on in the real estate market in your area? That's what I could say. Oh, I'm hearing the value of my home is kind of going up and nothing's staying on the market, man. I saw a sign go up and two days later, it had a sold sign on. It's kind of crazy. You go, great, great. So you are aware that this market's gone insane. Yeah, I am. Okay, good. I want to ask you for a favor. Now, why do I use the word favor? People love doing favors for people. Okay, up to 70%, actually almost 80% of all humans want to do a favor for someone because they know they get valued for that. So I say, could you do me a favor? I go, yeah. Um, what's going on is we have tons and tons of buyers 
and not enough homes to sell them. So every home is getting 10, 12, 15 offers. I just wrote an offer last night, Tom, where we wrote an offer on a property that listed for 800. We wrote 850. They had 31 offers and seven of the 31 offers were over 950, over 150,000 over asking. So it's really been frustrating. Would you mind telling me who you know right now that's thinking about selling their home because we need more listings? Wow, Rick, that's a good question. I don't think I know anybody. I go, have you ever heard of a reticular activator system? No. Well, reticular activator system, Tom, is when you start driving a Toyota and you've never driven one before, you start to notice a bunch of other Toyotas. Has that ever happened to you? And he goes, yeah, as a matter of fact, I have. Well, it's the same thing. I called you today and talked about real estate with you. And guess what? Your reticular activator system is going to go up and you're going to start noticing a lot of other people talking about real estate. Would you do me a favor when you do? Pick up the phone, call me, let me help them because they may just need advice. They may need a realtor. They may, may need other solutions. I can help them with all of that. And every once in a while, one of those people is going to want to sell their house. So would you be all right with that? Sure, buddy. Right. Okay, Tom, I mean, let's set some time aside for when we catch up personally and then you can get off the phone. This is not difficult to do. It's just difficult to start. It's just a conversation. Now, this is being recorded. So I'm going to talk to my wife about how to make sure you guys all get that recording because you might want to hear those dialogues again. But sometimes it's just a check-in call. I want you, uh, I think I put in the chat group, I did, go to the chat group. Um, I'll, re, I'll repost it. Um, I'll repost it and let's see if I can repost it here. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Oops. I reposted something else. Uh -huh. Okay. It's not working, but somebody else can repost it <laughs> just in case you came in late. But it's rgtresources.com, rgtresources.com. Um, and um, I'll put it back in the chat. But if you could go there, we'll probably post this recording, but there's a lot of other good stuff there too. Uh, thank you, Cherie or Sherry. I don't know how you pronounce it, but. Um, Thank you for redoing that. And that, that's that got a lot of great stuff on it. And we're going to figure out a way to make sure these recordings get into good spots. So I'm, I'm super excited. Now, what I want to stop now and say this about getting uh, more listings in a, in a low inventory market. One last thing that would really help that a lot of people don't do. How many of you, uh, and don't answer or raise your hand or come off mute, I just want to know, think about the last time you sold something to a buyer. OK, so you can make yourself up a cheap little flyer that says we brought the buyer and we've got more. That's something you could put on a flyer. We brought the buyer and we've got more. One of the homes in your neighborhood recently sold. My buyer got it. I've got lots of buyers for this neighborhood. And I'm in contact with other real estate professionals who also have buyers with this neighborhood. If you're thinking about selling, there's never been a better time. One of the other things that one of my uh, buyer's agents did on uh, is that they uh, basically took a flyer and said at the very top, they just did this at home on their computer and press print on their own on their own printer at home. They put, this is the hottest seller market ever, exclamation point. If you've ever thought of selling, comma, ever, this is the time. Call me for a confidential evaluation of your home. And she put her name, phone number. That's it. Right now. She went, did another one. She happens to live in a neighborhood that's very heavy with military, veterans, Marines, you know, those kinds of things. So she put the Rick G. Howe real estate team serving the military, frontline, and first responders for over 40 years. Why? Because we have. Some of the first, probably the first 30 of the first 60 homes I sold were to cops or firefighters just because they all used to come into my mom's restaurant. So, all right. So those are the things that um, you can do to make a difference. Door knock, door drop, walk your dog and talk to people, chase your cat and talk to people, whatever you want to do, talk to people, okay? This is the time to bust out of the scarcity thinking and go get all that you deserve. And you deserve a lot, my friends, I promise you. All right, I'm going gonna, uh, gonna to allow five or six minutes for uh, questions comments, anything you want, uh, please make them positive and upbeat. Go for it. You have to unmute yourself because if you start talking, I won't know until you've unmuted yourself.
Nice purse, Vanessa. Thanks so much. I just got it. Yeah, is that is that for all the uh, kudos that you've done lately? Congratulations on all your success. Thank you. All right, and Vanessa, considering what kind of yeah, Vanessa too. Could you hear me? I'm sorry. I'm heading to a chamber meeting to go a oh. network for more listings. Okay. Good job. <laughs> we're good. We're we're. Anybody got any questions or comments? All right. Well, it's been great having you here guys today. Remember second and fourth Tuesdays of every month at 9 a.m. Pacific. Remember Fridays, free Friday coaching call, 9 a.m. Pacific, same Zoom link as today. I'll look forward to seeing you more and I'll get the recording out. Take care.